Joey Barton has got Ina Luku absolutely fearing for her life, apparently. Genuinely been scared, and she's apparently left the country after a stinging attack from Joey Barton. Who would have thought getting criticised for doing your job would leave someone so scared? Welcome back to Fog Football. We've made a few videos on Joey Barton. You know, it seems like the past month, he's really just went for it, man. The guy is really just... He's called out everything... Joey Barton, he's been on podcasts, of course, I've always seen him on James English, but he's been on a few, and, and he's he, he's everything, see anything in the world that's slightly controversial, you know, or any, like, political issue, Joey Barton's getting stuck in, and you know what, it, as much as I disagree with Joey Barton on some things, like, I do think he is a bit of a scumbag, I do genuinely think that, I think most of the things he's been talking about recently, he's actually correct in, but anyway, you know, well, when he talks about the old firm and all that stuff, he, he's talking out of his arse, but the rest, the rest of what he's talking about, he kind of knows what he's on about. But, I mean, to genuinely be scared, what this is, is she's away on holiday and she's trying to claim that Joey Barton's forced out the company, trying to probably trying to probably call it racist, when all Joey Barton's done is bashed her punditry, which is, and it, you know what, he's right to do that. He's, he's absolutely right to bash her punditry because it is absolutely abysmal. But Joey Barton has responded to this this morning here on the 17th of January. So as you can see, Joey Barton has responded to Aloku and it says here, Cry me a fucking river. I was waiting for the victim card to be played. Ina, love. Sorry, love. You're dreadful as a pundit. Tone deaf. Can't count. And most importantly, you know, next to nothing about men's football. You should have ran off to a desert island after your, your Arteta phone and Pep to put in a bid nonsense. That was quite bad, wasn't it? And he says, Everyone is laughing at you, not just me. End of tweet. Oh yeah, and I think the comments should be interesting for this. Um, let's see here. So we've got Trevor Tanner saying yes, and the most important question here is why she wasn't given feedback from her peers on her performance. They could have helped and, and encouraged her. Instead, they let her down. She should be calling them out for dishonesty. Barton said correct. Yeah, but see, it's all right, Trevor. They they can't though. They they see see the other male pundits, right? They just, they just have to sit, nod and accept and be like, yeah, we're not allowed to say anything because they've got their fucking balls held by Sky Sports. Like, let's be real, right? We, we all we all love watching Sky Sports and seeing, like, Carragher and Neville butt heads and Roy Keane, especially Roy Keane. I like Roy Keane writing Carragher, but end of the day is, you see if they're on with a woman and a woman gets it completely wrong, they're not going to say anything because of the world we live in because the backlash they'd receive. Now... I don't know if people remember, right? I've talked about it, I think, on my channel, maybe, but there was about five or six years ago, they asked on BT Sport, what is the biggest derby in British football? And Robbie Savage goes, Karen Kearney, what is the biggest, you know, gone in 60 seconds, yada yada, what's the biggest British rivalry in Britain, blah, 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 football? And she turned around and said, Manchester City, Man United, to which Chris Sutton said, that's embarrassing, you, you, that's silly, that's idiotic comments like that, embarrassing, blah, blah, blah. And even that, like, maybe that, you know, but fair play to Sutton for calling that out. Fair play. Because, you know, I honestly think, I was about, what, 2018, 19, around that time period, I honestly think around now, I'm not saying Sutton wouldn't, I'm not, not, I mean, I'm not, I'm not I'm sticking up for Sutton, but, you know, th like, they're just like, They've got their balls cut off, the pundits, and it's just not, it's not just football, it's the world. And you look at, I believe there was a comment the other day, um, it, I can't even remember what her name is, but Jamie Redknapp just sat there and nodded it away, nodded it away and agreed with her. It's like, what? What? Absolutely disgraceful. But um, Bruce says, fits the woke narrative nicely. I'm surprised Phil Thompson, Charlie Nicholas and co didn't take Sky for unfair demissal. They were binned because they were white heterosexual males, no other reason. You had old in there as well, but not that they were decrepitly old, but you know, I like Matt Letizia, I like off, I like, I mean, they were the glory days, you know, those three and Paul Morrison, Jeff and, you know, Chris Kamara, it was brilliant, Alan McAnally, I know Alan McAnally's still there and so's Morrison, but that's I, I like your core group of great guys into, like, I mean, that, that's what I'm fucking talking about, that is, that is what got people to tune in to Gillette Soccer Saturday every weekend, now, I mean, I, you might put it the odd in the odd time, like if Rangers aren't playing or something, you know, I need to edit and you listen to it in the background. But see for the most it's fuck, seeing you listen to it, man, it's cringy. It's honestly absolutely cringy. Anyway, guys, Joey Barton getting stuck in here 
Do you agree? Yes or no? Leave it in the comments section down below.